Hello? Yes, Kuya, we can hear you. But can you but see can... me? Not yet. Okay. How about this one? Yeah, we can see you oh. now. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody, and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, yeah. Sabbath. I, I really pers perspired today. <laughs> I have my fan on my back. Maybe you can hear the sound. It's, it's loud. It's maybe kind of disturbed to the background. No, anyway, I cannot hear the fan. You cannot. Okay, that's better. Um, by the way, I was, I was preparing a PowerPoint slide. And unfortunately, my computer suddenly shuts down. And so the backup was to use my, my phone. And we have a poor internet connection in our area. We're struggling with this. And I hope that I can go through this. I asked Maravik. By the way, thank you, Maravik, for inviting me in. Uh, how long will I speak? So she said about 30 to an hour. Praise God for that. Now I'll try to reconnect uh, my computer and hopefully I can get through the PowerPoint slides because I have a lot of things to show. Um, that is part of our, our remembering. Uh, we need visual aids, you know, as teachers too. Now, I'm going to reopen it, the Zoom in my computer. And I hope it will work out so fast. Um, by the way, oh no, unable to launch. So, what should I do? Should I just, okay, uh, I think there's a better way. I'll just um, focus the camera on the, the computer so that you can see my slides because my computer is not cooperating right now. So I asked for prayer, and I think the answer was different from what I expected. The answer was, yes, I can still go through, but not the way I expect it to happen. So here are some photos that, um, what can I do about this? Okay. Right here, we have some photos from the, a, in, in Korea. This was in 2008. Um, this is the time that we left Korea. It says there, um, crossing the finish line with no regrets. And I scanned the pictures that I've got. And interestingly, our, our testimony this morning, um, Brother Nomar, I, I kind of like his testimony. Brother Nomar, are you listening? And I got this photo here. I wanted to show you this one. Yeah, without regrets. So this is perhaps your last uh, mission, missionary um, term, I think. It was in 2008 or second to the last. And that's Brother Nomar. And here is another brother Nomar surrounded with the other ladies. Okay. And here's Brother Nomar. I got a lot of photos of Brother Nomar with me. It's in my file. And I treasure all the photos that I have in Korea. And here is another person. And this is, this is, this is Marvik. Okay. <laughs> How inconvenient we have right now. This is Marvik. And Marvik was there with us. And this is the guy or the kid she was talking about, it's Haven, our eldest, when we were there. Then that's little Jane. I miss little Jane. Uh, and then there's also my wife, Hazel. So this, these are our, our photos when we were in, in, in Korea. All right. So it's, it's kind of difficult to do that way. I'll just, maybe I'll just, uh, look me and listen to me or maybe just just listen okay according to randy skeet um woman can be the most effective agent of the devil um actually this is one of the reasons why i picked the topic god i uh, know um 
our our wives will um the story behind it was that when Maravik informed me that I'll be speaker, I immediately accepted the, the invitation and that's what I usually do. I accept without thinking and that's, that's really kind of stupid, uh, you know? You just commit and you don't even know what to say yet. And that's what's happening to me. And I did that a lot of times. I just nod and say, yes, I'm a yes man. And then later, um, I seek God's help, and that's my weapon, you know. I, I really don't know much, and I'm not really that good, but my God is great, and my God is really good. So I want to thank another person, um, Brother Wilbert. Um, Brother Wilbert, you are an instrument. I would say that it's because of you I actually got a hint of what to say. Uh, today, um, because in your name, Wilberto, um, there's the word will. So that gives you an idea that I should talk about will. This is what God impressed me. And I just need some words or some uh, additional words to make up a, a title or a topic. So, Father Wilberto, you have a very good name and good name according to the Bible in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 9, a good name is or to be chosen more than gold or riches. And Brother Wilberto, um, uh, thank you for being, for being patient with me. We had this chat and it's about minor things though. And perhaps what you said that I help, maybe that's part of our survey. Maybe I can help about that. Um, the topic about our wives' will um, actually was conceived um, in the afternoon that day when Wilberto asked me what topic would be uh, for that I would deliver about. And there are three reasons uh, during that day why I choose the topic, the, 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 the complete name, Our Wives' Will. Um, which is really odd or not really that attractive to listen to, but it's a deep title, I think. Um, in, according to Randy Skeet, as I told you earlier, that when he was speaking in the Chosen Vessel vir virtuous uh, meeting, uh, people say virtual meeting, but I would say that's a virtuous meeting. It's a meeting of people of virtue. And according to Randy Skate, that people, uh, women or women can be the most effective agent of the devil. Well, don't be offended, women. I'm not trying to discriminate women. Um, then the next reason, I got three reasons, actually. First was that, and the second reason was that um, during that day, um, I, was, I was helping my wife to prepare for for work uh, i'm her transporter i'm her driver i'm a front liner okay i'm a front liner I, I drove my wife since the lockdown i drove my wife every day almost every day um to the city it's a very quiet street so i love it during lockdown because you can just go through easily uh, being a front liner and as i was preparing to help her help her um, what she asked me to do was to prepare her uniform. So I, I ironed her clothes, uh, her uniform. And I was not expecting what will turn out during that time because as I was on my way to iron her clothes, because she said, I'm going to take a shower, so please prepare for me. And then I asked her, okay, I said it to uh, Rayon. I mean, there is a number, I think that's number four in, in the flat iron. And I thought this is a kind of uh, a silky cloth. So I'm going to use the, the cotton uh, for, for its temperature. But she said, no, just use the cotton. And I, I had a second thought, oh, really? Uh, okay. So I used the cotton and you know what happened? Uh, I burned her uniform. 
I was excited to tell you about that. A burner uniform, and she was, what am I going to do now? She said, um, you, just, you just messed up, you know? And I said, oh, you said, not, it's not my decision, it's your decision. It's, it's your will that I'm going to use cotton instead of rayon. And so she said, oh, let's get another uniform. And so that day, I figured out, wow, you know what? In our lives, um, our decisions are, are sometimes going to change because of somebody else's will or because of somebody else's um, ideas. And even though sometimes you think it's right, but you think maybe the other idea is also right. So we're going to use that idea instead of our preconceived ideas. So I thought about, ah, oh, I'm going to use my wife's will. Okay. But later it has changed to our wife's will. And I'm going to tell you why uh, later. The third idea uh, or the third reason was that um, I was praying about it. And the time that I said yes, and I was impressed that God asked me to use our wives' will with the apostrophe after the wives to emphasize um, the things that influences us in making a decision, an action, or a choice. And I'm going to narrate to you some of my, my choices in life, why I now become like this. Okay, to continue, I'd like to ask everyone to bow our heads for a prayer of humility, guidance. And I invite you for a prayer. Our merciful Father, you are a Lord worthy of honor and praise on the Sabbath day. And I wanted to ask first and foremost, Lord, for your intervention. Please humble me, Lord. Hide me behind you, dear Father, that what we will learn about is not about me but it's about your goodness, about who you are. It's about your, your mercy, your grace towards us. And Lord, may what will I say today is what you have planned for me to say. I submit my will to you, dear Father, that I will do what you ever will for me right now and onwards. Bless everyone, dear Father, as we listen to your words. In Jesus' name I pray. All will say, Amen. Are, are you with me, everybody? Um, friends, missionaries? Yes, Kuya, yes, we are yeah. here. I, I just greeted, I, I greeted only Maravik and Alberto. I, I wanted to greet also um, Sir, I uh, don't know, Father Kuya Jo, Kuya Jo, Deloy. And if Mom Jane Hilary Yao is there, those people mentioned, they're really uh, an inspiration to me. Um, senior missionaries. I am here. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mom Jane. Good to, good to hear your voice. Um, and also the rest of the missionaries who are in this meeting. Um, let me continue. Um, this sermon is not to make guys feel good, actually, or husband like me. Um, it's not to discriminate ladies and women or even wives. Um, you know, I, at one occasion, I was invited to speak in a God, not God, but a God seminar. Um, that's G-A-D. Um, in that seminar, uh, it stands for Gender and Development Seminar. And actually, many times when I entered the public school, I, I was compelled or we are compelled to attend that kind of seminar because part of the uh, in-service training of DepEd. And I actually didn't get what does it mean or what's really the purpose of that God seminar? Until such time that I was invited to be a speaker and I just, like what I said, I always said, I always say yes. So I accepted the challenge. And only that time that I understood what God is. Not, not what God is. And before, th that kind of seminar was held during Saturday and I, I told myself, I'm not going to attend um, whenever the God seminar is conducted on Saturday. I'm going to be with a God seminar on Sabbath day. Now, going back to God, uh, gender, and, and development, um, it helped me understand the issues about women 
uh, facing based on culture and stereotyping. And to be honest with you, this is very uh, interesting. When, when we are assigned to do something or we are assigned to speak, um, it gives us an opportunity to learn much. And in fact, this is another opportunity to learn about God and to, to become a better Christian and to be drawn closer to God because of this opportunity to talk. So, um, women, again, there's nothing against you about this sermon. And in fact, I am convinced that this message is also an empowerment to women. And I discovered as I was studying about this topic that women are in the past are very powerful and much more at present. Do you agree with that? Okay. Before we continue talking about women, I'd like to make a special point pointing on the word our, because the title is Our Wives Will. Um, should have been a better uh, way if I can show you the slides, but um, it's not, it's like what I said, it's not working that as I expected. Um, here, our wives will. And I, I show here a picture of um, Korean women with Korean guy. And this is what I've learned when I was in Korea. I love my experience in Korea. The people there were so nice. Uh, the people who helped me uh, through those years, like five or six years, um, they're so good to me. And God, I praise God for them because they have prepared for me that I can be uh, effective in my mission field. And one thing I've learned in Korea, though I tried to learn the language, is one of the struggles there uh, to learn to, to learn a new language or the Korean language and since I was teaching in, in high school, there was one foreign teacher um, whom I could work or could teach there, left me a book. It's about survival Korean. And so I learned from that book, uh, Korean culture, and why is it that the language in Korea is like this? And I discovered this word, our. Um, by the way, you can tell me what is our in Korean. Those who are, who are in Korea, what is our in Korean? Anybody? Okay, ask this question to check whether you're around. Uri. Maribay, can you still remember what is our in Korea? Uri da, uri. Uri, uri. Uri, very good, very good. <laughs> uri, kuya. Uri, kuya, uri. All right, thank you. You know what? Uh, when, I, when I learned about, about this word, uri, uh, it was used in an example like, uri nampion. Ori Nampion. It means our husband. Our husband. And you know what? At first I laughed at it and I said, It's it's funny. Why do you say our husband? It's her husband. But later on I discovered that they use Ori Hakyo. Ori Dong Sing. What what else? Ori Nijib. Ori Kyohi and Ori Nara. And this language is all over in in Korea. In their culture, they use Ori instead of what is my? What is my? They use our country, our children, our children's house, our house. But what my? You know what? What I can remember, the use of my in Korea was this. My name is. And I would say like, uh, So that's what I can remember. I just like, <laughs> very seldom they use the word my. They just use our most of the time. Yeah, oriirum. <laughs> this is difficult. Oriirum, juvenilida. Okay, it, it becomes specific when you say um, uh, my. But why do you use ori most of the time? Because in their culture, they 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 remind us that one's possession is also another people's possession. Isn't it interesting? One's possession is another people's possession, and this reminds us that God put man in the garden to tend and keep the garden as stewards. We are all possessor of what God has um, asked us to, to tend for. You know, we are bro our brother's keeper. And like what um, uh, Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? 
you know, we are our brother's keeper. So we say our, our is a very interesting word and I hope we will use this from now on and onwards to use our, not just mine. And there's a tagline in a commercial before, I don't know if you can remember, I tried to figure out and tried to recall, what was that commercial when it says like, it's ours, uh, it's not yours, honey, it's ours. That's kind of tagline. Um, millennials don't no longer, maybe you don't know that, no longer know these things. Or uh, you're not familiar with this. In a way, yeah, we are supposed to use our, we are our brother's keeper. We are responsible for one another. And another thing was that um, about our, there is a kind of word that maybe our friend um, from other countries know the word Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Are you familiar with the word Ubuntu? Anybody say yes or no? No. No. Okay. Like, and remember oh, yeah. the Ubuntu? Okay. How about our friend from other countries? Okay. Ubuntu was actually, I first encountered the word, it spells U-B-U-N-T-U. I encountered this word in a, in a computer lab because I was introduced into um, a new software. It's a kind of an open source application um, that is uh, kind of similar to Windows or Microsoft Windows, but it's open source. It's for free. And the good thing about Ubuntu is that it doesn't keep a virus. It's a virus-free application. So that's what I know about Ubuntu. But one day, um, I, was, I was invited to attend a wedding. And that's the first time, I think, or the second time that we became a principal sponsor together with my wife. So I accepted the invitation to be a sponsor in a wedding um, of this little boy whom whom uh, who accompanied me before when I was in my mission field in Mindanao, and now it, he became an engineer in the Department of uh, Public Works and Highway, DPWH, and he invited me to Butuan to attend his wedding. So I don't want to um, refuse. I said yes, but I didn't mind what would be the cost of going to Butuan. So. What I secured first was the plane ticket because once it's closer to the date, it becomes expensive. So while it's still far from the schedule, I had to purchase a ticket. So I was able to pay for my wife and myself, for my wife and I. But then as the days close to the date that I was supposed to go, my wife asked me, um, do you know where were to stay in Butuan City? And I said, actually, no. How stupid. You, 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 you decided to go to Butuan City and you don't even know where to stay? And I just said, actually, I don't know. Maybe there are some friends of ours there, like our brethren in the church, because I scheduled uh, a time to speak in one of the churches in Butuan. That's why I wanted to go there and I should go there Friday so that by Sabbath day, I could speak in the church and then Sunday, there will be the wedding. <laughs> Where are we going to stay? Maybe in a hotel? And how much is the hotel? Have you booked a hotel? And I said, no. As the days get closer, maybe two days before, how God work is really amazing. You know why? Because a friend of her heard that she was, we, we are going to Butuan City and chatted to her. And it's her um, classmate in University of the Philippines and now living in Butuan City. And she said, if you'll be coming to Butuan City, please stay in our house. Please stay in our house. She was begging to let us stay in our house. And I said, wow, isn't it amazing? I, I just decided and I really didn't have any idea where to stay. But then there was this offer that we'll be staying in their house. Anyway, they are a very good, they're very good people, their husband and their children, and, and I would tell you, it's better than a hotel, because free food, and we live in an air-conditioned room, and we have this privacy, and we were fetched from here to there with their car. I mean, like, wow, this is how God prepared your way. And there's a promise in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, that um, I, I will do not be, 
discouraged, do not, do not fear, do not be dismayed, for I will go with you wherever you go. And I claim that promise all the time, all the time. So that time when I was in the room, I saw this tiny book. And this book is about Martin Luther King Jr. And when I opened there, I found it there that he, he uses this very strong word, Ubuntu, to convince um, people to white to end the apartheid, to, to, to end racism in America. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. was very significant in the transformation of America. So there he said about the meaning of the word Ubuntu. He said that Ubuntu means I am because we are. I am because we are. Meaning to say that what I am now is because of you and what you are because of us. You know, we are inseparable. We are responsible for one another. So the word our is is a very deep word. Sometimes we just take it for granted, but we don't seem to know a deeper meaning about the word our. And this word was also used by Nelson Mandela. You know, Nelson Mandela is a very influential person. And uh, this Montoto, uh, a, a very known um, writer, a philosopher. And according to Nelson Mandela, um, it is it's illustrated in a way that um, it's like going to a village and then you just stop by in a village and you can eat without even asking um, the village people and then left or leave. But it doesn't mean that you're going to just abuse, you be dependent on somebody all the time. But it means that in order for us to leave, we need each other's help. Especially, this is a very good reminder for us during the lockdown, okay? During the, in the Philippines, we call that as ECQ, Enhanced Community Quarantine. And during that time, we thought that we are not, um, we, we've been isolated from one another. But I always pray to God that God will use us to become an, an instrument, a blessing to others. On one occasion, I was, I was driving to fetch my wife from the hospital, and I passed by this girl uh, carried by, by his dad at the checkpoint. So without any hesitation, I pull over and ask about um, where are they going? And he said that, the man said that they're going to DSWD, that's the uh, De Development of, uh, no, Department of Social Welfare and Development, and which is like um, two kilometers or three kilometers away from where they're standing. But there were no vehicles passing that time it's an ECQ. So I can give you a ride. So as I was giving them a ride, they discovered that that girl was a cancer patient and they're seeking for help at the Department of um, Social Welfare. And, and I just imagine how difficult their life was that they were traveling uh, without any transportation and she's even having a cancer. And she's bald. She, she had her hair covered. And I even make a kind of um, post on Facebook and it really touched the hearts of the many and were able to raise money for her um, because of that incident that um, I asked God that we will become a blessing to somebody and then God showed us to somebody where, whom we can help. So, and that's not the only occasion but there are a lot of occasions that I encountered during the lockdown that we become a blessing to other, other people. So, anyway, so we, we would like to proceed from the word our. I'm not going to stop, get stuck in the word our, but I just wanted to emphasize the importance of the word our or bonto. That we are because I am, and I am because we are. We have different talents, and we need somebody else's talent that we can thrive in this world. Now, let's focus on the will, wife's will. Maybe, maybe some of you find it odd or weird. Why did they choose this topic, wives' will? What does it mean? Why is this an apostrophe after the word wives? Um, actually, that's, that's plural, right? Plural of wife. So we have wives. And it's more of the, it's more in a possessive form that is possessed by our wives. So I, I don't want to talk about my wife, but I, I wanted to talk about, in general, wives, especially the, the wives who were depicted in the Bible. 
And there were famous words in the Bible that I actually um, picked. And maybe you, you can recognize the different wives here. Um, uh, first is we have Job's wife. Do you know who Job's wife was? Not Job, not me, but Job, Job's wife. Um, she's an unknown woman, right? And there's another wife, Lot's wife. And she was also unknown, right? And another unknown woman was Adam's wife. She was also unknown. And I will tell you why, okay? These three unknown women were actually story in the Bible. And I, I will tell you why. First is, you know what makes Job's wife um, very, very popular in the Bible? Because she is, um, she, she was, yeah, okay. Okay, she was quoted or she mentioned in the Bible in, chap in, in Job chapter 2 verse 9, the only thing that she said in the entire Bible, in, in 42 chapters of Job, she only said once. You know what, he said, what she said? She said, are you still, um, oh, never mind. Are, are you following me? I should have used, shown you the slide. Yes, Paul. Okay. Yes, we're here. Are, are you opening the Bible? Job chapter 2, verse 9. This is the only time that this woman spoke. Okay? She said to Job, are you still maintaining your integrity? And you know what follows that? What did she say? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Isn't it interesting? And before I'm going to talk about her, I'm going to talk about another woman, Adam's wife. Do you know who Adam's wife was? Do you know who? Eve. Ah, okay. You know, Eve is uh, the mother of nation, but Adam's wife was at first unknown. It, isn't it interesting that in Genesis, it was mentioned Eve only after they sinned against God, only after they disobeyed God. But before, Eve was only called a woman. Before she sinned, before she was uh, tempted, you know. And what's interesting about Eve, she was the one who called what the devil said. And that's why uh, Randy Skeet made her an example that woman can be an effective agent of the devil because the devil talked to her and then what the devil said to her, she said it to her husband. You know, her will has influenced her husband. And how about Job's wife? She has also a will. She said, curse God and die. She mentioned that. And what's another interesting wife? It's Lot's wife. And Lot's wife was also unnamed. But how interesting it is that in the Bible, God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's something that is uh, good to remember about, something that is, is something to celebrate about. And God said, remember. Please don't forget it because it brings joy to your life. But at one instance, God said in Luke chapter 17, verse 32, remember Lot's wife. Why do we have to remember Lot's wife? It should have been that forget Lot's wife. But why God, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife? So I'm going to talk about these three women and what happened to them and what were their influences. Now let's go back to, to Eve. You know Eve and Adam, okay? Because Eve's will wouldn't make any sense without Adam, okay? And also Job's wife would not make any sense without Job. So what Eve actually said was that, okay, eat this, and if you eat this, you're going to die. And what was the situation of Adam that time? Adam was in a perfect state. You notice that he was in a perfect state. But what was the response to uh, Eve's invitation? Because of the will of his wife, okay, 
whom God sent as a helpmate or a helper turn out to be an, 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 an influence to Adam where Adam also disobeyed God. You know, when I study this passage, sometimes it makes us confused whether we're going to uh, obey our, our wife or not, or whom are we going to obey? You know, in my marriage life, um, I've been to a lot of rings, and this is what I've learned from many sermons. There are what we call the engagement ring, uh, that's the time that we wanted to be engaged. And there is this wedding ring, and then you put together. And then there is another ring is the, the, the boxing ring where you open like argue or fight each other. And then there is this um, reconciling, you know. Then you reconcile each other. And then um, there's another one that talks about uh, share ring. And we, we share one's uh, what what we have uh, with each other, you know. So th this kinds of rings that 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 goes through our lives. Now, wives are there as our helper. You know why? Because God said first in in Genesis, He said, when when man was created, He gave the instruction first that do not eat the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. And immediately after that. He saw that man was alone and then he created woman. It means to say in order that God first made a relationship with man before God made a relationship between man and woman. So take note that women can become an influence to us. A woman can be an influence to, to the man, but take note that God has first established a relationship with man. That this influence, this this influence, this relationship with anyone should not be above God, and this is very significant because sometimes we lost this perspective. You know, say for example, if there's a fight between couples, and because there's a fight, and then sometimes I would entertain the idea that oh, it's useless to live as a Christian, it's useless to be an Adventist or to obey God, and my wife is like this. And sometimes I like, I'm like this. So when there are troubles, I, I, I tend to get discouraged. But God reminded us that we are one and we should not be fighting and, and we should care for one another. And we are going to, to do the first in the first place, obey whatever God instructed us. Okay, moving to the reaction of Adam. You know what happened? When Adam was given this fruit and then the real thing was that I'm not going to let go of what has given me. So he also disobeyed God. Because of the woman, they, uh, no, no, you know what was the answer of Adam? Because of the woman that you gave me, that's why I disobeyed you. You know, because of the woman. Sometimes we make excuses. We make excuses that it's because of somebody else's will and then we commit mistakes or we commit sin or we disobey God. That's why I made this topic about the will of the wives or other people's will because wives actually have a very strong influence in couples or in the family's life. It, it, wives can be somewhat something else that has a very strong influence in our lives. So this is an illustration that sometimes when this strong influence will over um, uh, will be over God's influence in our lives. Okay, so that's what the response of Adam. Now let's go to before I continue. I'd like to ask you, who do you think is the best wife among the three? Adam's wife, Lot's wife, or Job's wife? Can I can I hear any response? Just just your opinion. Just your opinion. Just your observation. None of the above. None of the above from, from Jane. Okay. Well, actually, um, they, they, they actually named all of them uh, erroneous. I mean, like, they, they commit mistakes, you know? But let's try to see what's good about these women. Okay? What's good about these women. Now, for, for Eve, it was only the time when she ate the fruit 
that she knew what is good and evil. The Bible said that very clearly. It was only the time when she ate the fruit that she knew what is good and evil and also, and also ate them. So it was like, it seems to be unfair that you don't know what's good and evil, but the only thing is just she disobeyed because she was attracted, she was tempted. And many of us are tempted alike. Okay, and we fall into some kind of problem even though we have the knowledge of good and evil. So I try to defend Eve, her situation. Now let's go to um, Job's wife. You know, Job's wife just said, and I searched about topics about Job's wife, and you know what? Somebody defended her, but most people said that she was a woman with wicked lips. She said, curse God and die. But you know what? When I review our lesson, we have this lesson study. Actually, Job's wife was a wife of integrity as well. No? In the whole chapter, you have not heard about her complaining except for that occasion. And you know why? Because she loved Job so much. Because she is a helper to Job in their culture. Man, woman without her man is nothing. You know that famous line? A woman, comma, without her man, comma, is nothing. But you know, in our times, it, they remove the comma. Okay? And I mean, like, no, no. In, nowadays, woman without her man is nothing. They put a comma, but now there's no comma. Okay, a woman, a woman without her man. No, no, I'm confused. Let me see the notes again. I missed the line. <laughs> okay, a woman, comma, without her man is nothing. Okay, that's in our time, but in the past, um, a woman. Without her man, is nothing. But in a way, um, it's kind of funny to think that in the culture in the past, it has changed nowadays. Women are superior than women. I mean, women are superior than men. Um, I, I wouldn't have to, to make others an example, but I would say that my wife is superior than me. My wife is listening right now because I love her. Okay, I submit to her. But it's not about dominating, but to respect one another. Now, in the case of Job, she was dependent on Job. And being a helper without her master, she would be nothing. Losing Job, she was watching Job from the time that Job got sick. She was taking care of Job, though it wasn't mentioned. But as a wife, it is normal that she would be taking care of her husband. She took care of Job, the time that Job got very, very sick. And also, she comforted Job, the time that Job lost, her lost his children, his, his possessions. And you can just imagine how painful was it to be in the situation of Job's wife. And out of her anguish and pain, only that time when she was watching Job seated with boys from head to toe, she cannot hold herself and express, you are a man of integrity, curse God and die. When it say you are a man of integrity, in another translation it says that you are a blameless man. Why can you just die? In a way, when you die blameless, then you will be seen. Okay? Because maybe if you curse God, you will die. The reason that you are alive, because God made you alive. So he gave this suggestion in pity of Job because she loved her, she loved Job so much. And this is what the lesson is telling us that we cannot judge her because later on we found out that they had many children after that tragic part of their lives. So Job's wife was not something to be judged of as an evil woman or a wicked woman. She was a faithful woman according to the our study our lesson study in the past issues now okay thank you for the comment uh, superior nato 
uh, because that's that's about leadership. You no, know? we 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 serve as to lead our household. Anyway, let's proceed to Lot's wife. Lot's wife is different. Lot's wife is more of like many of us in our times. Lot's wife had this question, has this issue. Why was it that she has been silent all throughout the Bible? She was silent. Have you heard Lot's wife speaking? No. Why? And this raises a question. And you know what's interesting about Lot's wife? Lot's wife was mentored by Sarah. You know, Abraham had mentored Lot. They were counseling them. They, they were in good. They were in a good family. They were faithful. In fact, according to the commentary in Amazing Facts, Lot's wife was actually knowledgeable about the truth. Lot's wife wanted to be saved when the angel said, "You have to depart Sodom and Gomorrah, so that you will be saved." She knew. The, the, the purpose, she knew what was the instruction, the command of the, of the angel or God. She knew she wanted to be saved. She knew the truth. But what was the problem? She was silent. Why was she silent? What shuts her mouth? You know, sometimes there, there are a lot of things that are actually mentioned about surrounding Lot's wife's story. There are a lot of things. Um, it's another thing that Lot's wife turned to salt, and God said, Be ye the salt of the earth, right? But here comes literally Lot's wife became a salt. Is that what Jesus meant? No, it is ironic because supposedly we should share, but we kept silent. We are the salt and we should share, but then we kept silent and we end up a salt, just like, just like. Um, Lot's wife. Well, the commentary said that she knew about God's will, but what holds her? Because she was there accustomed. There's a word. Um, I learned this word when I was in Korea, and I was I I was fearful enough that I will be institutionalized. Institutionalized. No, when I experienced having a gadget, a computer, and Maybe sometimes we become too accustomed to it, we're comfortable with it, and we don't want to let go of those things. We are um, bound to it. And I have this experience, you know, that sometimes God really cares for us and take it away from us. I have this computer because I love editing and I love using the computer most of the time. And then one time, God allowed somebody to broke into our house and took my computer. At first, I thought like I cannot live without, without my computer before. It was expensive. And it was my treasure, I thought. But then it was taken away from me. God allowed somebody to break into our house and then stole it. And it's gone. You know, the good thing about that, I was able to trace who stole it. It was a 15-year-old girl. And I ended, I ended up um, um, feeling pity towards her. And even extending more help to her because of her condition. That's, that's the one that forces her to steal somebody else's property. You know? So the danger is that, just like Lot and his wife, but his wife was actually, um, um, what's this? She, she, she was too attached to the material things in Sodom and Gomorrah. It is a very prosperous place. She couldn't afford to lose her things that she bought the things that she, she admired the most. But you know what? She's a very good Christian. She's a good follower Amen. of God. She's a believer. But the problem was that she cannot let go. And that, well, shuts, OB. Her mouth. that shuts her mouth. Not telling people and not even telling, uh, encouraging people that we must leave. That's why when the angel challenged that if there's five of you, then I will not burn the city. They could not find because people would not believe them. Because they say, maybe Lot's wife, if you're going to say something like that, but why is it Lot's wife is doing this and that? She was not a good example. Though she has this faith, in fact, a proof that she, was, she has this faith because when they were asked to go out, did she go out? Yes, because she believed. 
But the problem was that because of the strong attachment to the material things in this world turned around, it means a disobedience to God. God was at harsh to her, but it was her disobedience. Now that was the commentary of Ellen White and also the amazing facts. Many of us will become too attached to the things in this world. And you know, I have this experience, another experience. Um, when, when I left Korea, my plan was really uh, to become a teacher. I wasn't a teacher by profession, but because of the experience teaching in Korea, I admired the job. And I thought that what an, an, an instrument that we can be, if you're a teacher, we have a captured audience. And this is a very, very important instrument compared to a pastor is going to invite people, but you have a captured audience that you can speak to and share the gospel to them. So I thought becoming a teacher. And eventually I, I became a licensed teacher. And so I thought about, I'm going to teach in a public school. You know, I have to reach the people in the public, these children, the Filipino children. And then I thought also that, oh, this is a security for me. I'm helping these kids and then a secure job because I'm working in the government. But you know, as the, the years pass, I have this so much struggle that I, I'm so bothered about the thing that why am I spending much of my time in these things when there is another opportunity for me to, 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 to do something that is going to help much the work of God? Because right now, uh, we have a church school, a very small school. And this is an answered prayer when we were back in Korea with my wife. Um, we were actually just um, a whim thinking about is it possible that we can have our, our own orine jib, our own school? You know how interesting that we can apply their methods here, you know, and, and we, we, we can influence the children and then their parents. We were planning about those things when we were in Korea, but as years pass, I can, I can just imagine that, you know, in our church, we were able to build a school. And so we hired principal for our school, but I was teaching in a public school. And later, something dawned on me that I was thinking that why I spend so much time in here when I can do less for God's work? Why not take care of this school that God um, has uh, allowed us to put up in our church? And you know what? It was very for me because at first it was my plan that I'm going to grow old in a public school so that I can enjoy the benefits, the so-called benefits. That's what, I'm, that's what I was thinking before, and that's the common notion of most teachers, not all though. No, there are good um, Adventist teachers who are in the public school, but not all teachers. But most teachers that I have asked for, they said, wanted to be in a public school because in the Philippines, it's like, it's a stable job. You will get the benefits. Say, for example, right now, there's a lockdown. There is no school, but still they're enjoying the benefits. They get a full salary without deduction from the government. So. That was in my mind before, but I thought about, I'm growing old. Friends, when I turned to 40, that's the time I decided. That's 2013. I don't know, 2015? No, no, where's that? 2018, rather, that's 2020. Last 2018, I decided to quit in public school, and I had to accept this full-time job in our church school. We don't get the same benefits. You know, private schools are struggling in the Philippines, especially a local church school. It's not under um, the, 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 the benefits that are offered by our conferences. No, we generate our own income to support ourselves. It is still a missionary job. So that's what I was thinking. I'm going to grow old, and I wanted to spend my prime doing God's work. Well, we are still in, my, in our prime. We have to spend it for God's work. I don't want to say that I want to retire someday and by the time that I retire, I'm going to have a full-time work for God. What are you going to give God is the least of your time. And how, how sure you are that you can spend that time that you plan on spending for God would come. So I thought I have to decide that I'm going to be a missionary and have our own school. We're going to um, uh, push through with our vision or mission of evangelism through our school. And you know what? I discovered a lot of blessings came into my life 
not just in my life, but in our family's life, for our church and even for my wife. I can't imagine a lot of blessings actually that came into our lives. Blessing after blessing, and in this short moment, I cannot tell you everything, but you know what? One of the blessings that God showed me that is really guiding me, you know why? When I quit my job, the first trial came. It was the end of 2000, um, 2018. Um, I booked for our closing exercises. We usually have our closing exercises events or major events in SM City. So we hold our, our events in SM City because our church is quite small, can accommodate all, all the parents and the students or the pupils. So we have it at SM. And then I book early January because the closing exercises would be on, on April, first week of April. You know what? I wrote a letter because it has to be in advance because many people would like to book to use the activity center at SM City um, here in, in Consolation area. And then I was confident enough, year, a month rolled by, then March. The end of March, I went to SM and I asked, okay, can I pay now? I'd like to pay my reservation. And to my surprise, the marketing officer came to me and said, oh, Joven, so you're gonna pay now? And if I'm um, correct, you wanted to have your schedule on Saturday, right? I was shocked to hear what she said. And I said, no, I, I said that we're gonna have uh, these closing exercises on Sunday. I, I wrote it in my letter and said, wait a minute, I'm gonna get your letter. But when she took the letter, what I wrote there in my letter was the date indicating Saturday, not Sunday. And you know what happened? I was sitting alone inside the conference room. The marketing officer left me. She said, um, I'll excuse myself. Uh, I'll give you time to think. Do. Because you know, during that time, it was already close to the date. Instead of April 6th, I booked April 5th. And you know what? All the days are already booked for SM. Morning and afternoon session, almost all schools wanted to use SM City. And she said, when I asked, um, just, just trying to maybe find any hope, I said, is there any available date? She said, the available date would be next month. The whole month is booked for April. I cannot afford to have, to change the schedule. The, the pupils are set, the speaker is set, um, the parents are set, and Maybe those who are booking for SM, they're already, already set. And I said, is it possible that we can change the schedule for other school? And she said, that would be very, very impossible. And you know, I wanted to cry. I was inside the conference room and I prayed to God, Lord, why am I in this mess? I'm making a big, big, a terrible mistake. And it's going to be putting our school into shame. And also me, the reputation that I have. I thought I can be of help, but look what I have done. I mess up. It's a close exercise and it's very significant in the lives of the people and also the parents. And then we cannot have it because it's in Saturday. I'm not going to do it on Saturday. I have to do it on Sunday. And so I prayed to God, begged the Lord for help. Though I sought also suggestions from others and they said, uh, our suggestions are not possible also. Other places are, also, are already booked around the area and they're also expensive. So I said to the marketing officer, um, I'll just go home first and I will tell you later what I'm gonna do. And you may, there's another place, but it's very tiny. I'm sure you will not be accommodated there, but that's the only option that we have. There's another place somewhere in, in the mall, but it's very little. So I said, uh, maybe that's, we will consider that the least. So I went home and I prayed. I told my wife, I told my, my father-in-law, my father-in-law is the president, and I told the home and school president, and they were so sad about the news. And I thought to myself, maybe there's a plan, and I don't know what's the plan, what's God's plan, why he put me into this kind of mess. But... Then I just said, oh, let me just continue with the preparation because you have like less than a week to prepare for that date. 
So I thought about calling those who book for Sunday and maybe I can ask for an exchange. So I called the school. There are two schools that seem to have similar names were booked on that date. When I called the other school, they said, no, you didn't book. But there's other school when, whom I cannot reach. I didn't find out whether, whether they're the one really booked for that, for that date and I couldn't reach them. So I just let go. But you know what's amazing? God is really good. As I was working for the ribbons, the medals, the certificates, on, um, SM called me. I was supposed to call them and ask them, uh, were there any good news? But then she called me, and I was surprised. And I, I started to, to feel something strange. My heart was pounding. And then she said, um, Sir Joven, um, have you talked to the principal of uh, Tayud Elementary School? And I said, no, why? Joven, please come to SM right now. And I said, what? Why? 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 Don't just come to SM right now. Just come to SM right now. And I said, what's this emergency? So when I heard that, I, I, I panicked and I immediately ran to SM. I drove to SM and I went to the office and she was there waiting for me. You know what? The very first thing she said, you're so powerful. And I said, no, I don't have any power. What did you do? Have you, have you talked to, how were you able to convince the principal of Tayud Elementary School? And, 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 she, and I said, why, what really happened? She was so surprised to give me that report. She said, an hour after you left, you know what happened? I received a call from Tayud Elementary School that they're going to back out on Sunday. The schedule that you've asked for. And I said, like, are you sure? And she said, really, really, it's true. And I thought to myself, wow. And I was, I was speechless. And I just stand there for a moment. And I was, I could not look at her and just said, you know, Joven, this is the first time that I, I experienced a real miracle as I was working in SM. So I said, Lord, you are really with me. And you know what? I, I, am, I am hopeless at the time and I could look at it any ways. And, and this is what I can say. God works when there seems to be no way. When you have exhausted everything, when you submit everything, that's the time that God works. I'm sorry. You know what? Every time, every time that I share this experience, this is my, 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 my biggest why that I have to continue, that I have to serve God and to commit as a missionary because I experience God's presence. God's leading. I, that was a, the most embarrassing moment in my life, I would say. And there was no option for that, that I could do anything about it. But God, I see how God intervenes and show his power. And, and let people say, this is the first time that I experienced a real miracle right before me. Right before me. Isn't it amazing, friends? You know, Sometimes we have to make a decision. We have to decide. We have to make a will in our lives. Whether this will is motivated by others or perhaps motivated by our own desire. You know, our wife, my, my wife and I, to tell you honestly, we are, we are living in a neat life. But you know, we're living day by day. We don't have any money in the bank. Our possessions are all given. We have a car, but that was a donation. We have a house. It's also a kind of gift. And even our computers, they're given. You know what? This is something to tell. This is something to do with what God said. And what King David said, King David said in his prayer, Lord, do not make me rich for I might 
forget you. And Lord, do not make me poor either, for I might curse you. But Lord, just give me my daily needs. Just supply my daily needs. And you know what? This is confirmed by Jesus. And as we study the, the prayer of Jesus, he was not praying for a monthly supply or a yearly supply. God is praying, give us our daily bread. Just daily bread. And now I understand why God is not giving us much, why God is just giving just enough for us so that we will call upon Him daily. We will depend on Him daily. We cannot go through life without Him. And that is what we have experienced nowadays. Even during lockdown, we praise God. We were sustained. We were sustained. It's not because of, of we, we have a lot of things. It's because God has given us providence. Everything is provided. And, you know, this is what I said. That where we are right now, what we are right now, it is because of God's will. Sometimes we make our own will. Our will are not going to work. Our will is going to work only if we align it with God's will. You know? Only when we align it with God's will. We can be influenced by wives' will. Our wife, our spouses, our husband, they have a, the will for us. But let us look back. What was the command of God? We must always go to God. Whenever we have a fight or trouble, we always seek God. We ask God to intervene in our problems. Because without God, we can become like the women in the Bible, like Lot's wife. You know why I use Lot's wife? Because what's telling me? Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife is a lost wife. Again, Lot's wife was a lost wife. And why was, he, was she lost? Because she was silent about God's love. God, the truth about God's salvation. She was silent about that. She doesn't want to be known for his God, with, his, with her God. She became a lost wife. And what about Job's wife? Job's wife seems to be a bad wife, a wicked wife. But you will notice that behind her intention, she was a faithful wife, a caring wife. And that's why God, despite of the losses, you know, can you imagine losing all her children, how painful it is? How painful it was? Losing all, all her children? But then, despite of the losses, not lost, she was not lost. They have losses, but then God restored what was lost in them. Okay? The losses were restored. They were blessed. They were blessed by God. The possessions were restored even better than before. And what about Eve? Eve, she was not lost. Why? The only thing is that they were cast out of the perfect state and they are now in a sinful life, in a sinful world. They were cast out from a world without sin. Now they are in a world with sin and now we are into it. We cannot afford to be lost. We can afford loses but not lost at all. And the very warning for us here is that we make our will should be the will of God, not the will that may influence us, make choices and decisions in life that are going to disobey God. Or we are not going to be proud of our God or boast for God's glory. You know, co-missionaries, I have a lot of things to share about experiences and blessings and for this time, and this is what God inspired me to, to say, because I look always into Jesus. Why did I use the topic about will? Because Jesus, when he prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know what he prayed for? He prayed for himself. But that is the thing that's supposed to be God will answer, because Jesus is one with God. But that was the only prayer of Jesus that God did not answer. That God's answer was opposite to what he was asking for. 
But why? Because he was praying for him to be saved. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, Father, let this cup pass by me. But he continued, but thy will be done. Friends, co-missionaries, let us examine our will, our choices, our priorities in life, what we wanted to do in life. God has a better plan for us. We may not be somebody that will be respected in this world because of our fame, because of our riches. But what is one thing that God will do to us is that He's going to use us to bring people into His kingdom. We do His will, just like Jesus, even though it was a huge sacrifice for Him. It was His life to give. But He still gave it to Him. Lastly, friends, I'd like to share this one. How many of you are familiar with the word sacrifice? And this is my realization. And that's why, that's the choices that I make. I thought about sacrifice before is something that I have to let go, even though I don't like to let it go, because it's something very valuable. Like, for example, I sacrificed my job and joined the missionary. That's what I thought before. When I joined the missionary, I gave a testimony. I left my job. It's a very um, promising job. I left and I joined the missionary. That's a sacrifice. That's what I thought about before. But you know, friends, as you're going to read and study the Bible, making that decision of sacrifice is not what it is. Sacrifice, friends, is based on the story of Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, they were asked God to offer a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? Sacrifice is the best that you have. The best that you have. And that's why in the understanding of Cain, he offered the best that he has is this. The, the, the fruits of his life, the fruits literally, the vegetation. But for Abel, it's, it's the sheep, the best sheep that he can offer. It's the best that he possesses. And Jesus, in an example also, he was a sacrifice because he is the best and the only way whereby man will be saved or we will have salvation. Now, let us come to realization that sacrifice is not something that we treasured most and we give up. We give up for something in exchange of something. No. Sacrifice is your life because the best of your life should be given to God. And that is the true sacrifice. It's not the sacrifice that you let go of your car, you let go of your properties. That's not the sacrifice. The real sacrifice is the giving of your life. This is according to Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice which is acceptable unto God. Living sacrifice. Now, dear friends and co-missionaries, once a missionary is always a missionary. And this is the most honorable job. And I, I stick to it. When I read it in the back of a, of, of a magazine, when I was in a mission field in Mindanao, I was encouraged when it said, the best job on earth is the missionary. Why? Because your employer is none other than, not, no other than God, the creator of the universe. Friends, happy Sabbath to all. And I hope you are blessed. The Sabbath day. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kuya Joven. Praise God. Praise